As we're still trying to figure out a name for this Arkansas-Mississippi football game. I got one that works for this specific one that we're going to watch on Saturday with What's these that? two teams, this exact teams, 2021 Razorbacks, 2021 Rebels, the buzzsaw bounce back. This is what both teams are trying to do. Running into a buzzsaw last week, getting their uh, face rubbed in the mud by potential national champions, and seven days later, bounce back against a team that it's, I don't know, a little more realistic uh, to beat them. Let's see what Brent Norsworthy thinks about this. He is the pregame host, uh, postgame host, the Mississippi Rebels Football Radio Network, also a good friend of Drew and a good friend of this radio station, hosts on 56 Sports in Memphis as well. And, Brett, we love having you on the show. How are you today? I'm doing great, Phil Elson. Great to be with you and Drew. And love coming in to dance, Little Sister, by my favorite band, the Rolling Stones. They're going to be in Nashville on Sunday night, and I can't make it. It'd kill oh. me if I tried to do it. And uh, stinks to try to make weekend concerts during athletic season, certainly on uh, during Come on, football Vic, season. It's football season. I ain't I got time for this. <laughs> I know. That's why I get to go to a concert next Wednesday. You got you to gotta save them for Wednesday. So, um, yeah. you know, every, both these teams went into last week with – uh, dreams of big road upsets and and thought sure. maybe they were in position to do it. They were proved otherwise, and so you know th- this week it's about uh, it's about bouncing back. And for for Mississippi, you got to find a way to get the offense going. Couldn't really get it going at all last week. And for Arkansas, nothing worked. I mean, truly nothing worked against Georgia. So I uh, guess it's all about who can bounce back here. Um, yeah. Tell me what. Uh, tell me your overall uh, impressions of Mississippi after these first. Uh, five games well at, at the four we're three and one we're exactly where i think every preseason prognosticator had us so you know, winning those first three that weren't a, a high degree of difficulty and then the biggest test in all of american sport not just college football but all of american sport defeating alabama in this dynastic run that coach nick saban is continuing on and it shows no sign of relenting. I thought there were some common denominators in both the Arkansas and Ole Miss losses last week, and it was in the line of scrimmage. It was it, it, in, where I think you win football, and I call it the two-guard center vortex. I, I call that kind of the Bermuda Triangle of college football in both Arkansas by Georgia and Ole Miss by Alabama were utterly destroyed in that area, really could not get anything done. And don't be deceived by the 21-point difference at, at Tuscaloosa. It was 21 that felt like 55. Yeah, but these are also two offensive lines that have been playing very well until going up against, you know, the, the sort of defensive line and front seven that you see from, from you know, programs like Alabama and Georgia. And really shouldn't say programs like them because there's only two of them anyway. That's right. Um, but, I mean, both That's teams right. have had good offensive line play, and both teams uh-huh. really need to run the ball this Saturday. That, to me, seems to be the number one key. It is the key, I, and it's always the key for me. Drew, you know that very oh, well. I, know. I, I, look at that, I, I look at that rushing number, and that, that can just about eight out of ten times tell me who won the game, whether it was by a margin of 34 to 31 or 180 to 50. It just about every time will, will tell it. And I do, I did think going into both of those games for both the Razorbacks and for Ole Miss, the offensive line was a strength to the team. It was a mighty tall mountain last week for both of them. And now this week, a little more kind of down in their weight class. And, and for the defeated team, whomever loses, it, about 2.30 Saturday, that September fun story. I said it was the greatest September in the history of Razorbacks football, and it was a really good September for Ole Miss. But somebody about 2.15, 2.30 Saturday is going to be working on a two-game losing streak. Yeah, unfortunately, the dream will be over for one of these darlings of the SEC West who are right now fighting to be that next program right behind uh, Alabama. The biggest thing for for Ole Miss and their big turnaround is the defensive improvement. And while you give up a lot of points to Alabama last week, the defense is better. So what's the main difference Arkansas fans and college football fans are going to see in the Ole Miss defense this year that they didn't see last year? Good. I think you're going to see a lot better tackling and a lot better tackling, not way down the field, at the more at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage, led by the Maryland transfer middle linebacker, number 44, Chance Campbell, had a relationship with D.J. Durkin at Maryland, had that extra, had an extra year, and is playing football in, in, in the South in the SEC and really doing a good job and doing a great job getting everybody lined up correctly. Now, I thought before last week, 
that the Ole Miss defense was not just improved. I thought it was pretty good. After last week, I want to take a pause on on that and see. But, again, back down in, in the weight class, but last week Alabama could do just about whatever they wanted to do whenever they wanted it. It, it didn't feel in the stadium that differently from the 66-3 to three route in 2017. Well, at one point, when it was, it was 35 to nothing, I thought we were on the way to that. And, and Nick Saban, I, I think he really – centered in on that game. I don't I don't think he has many that stand out above the rest, but I think he had that one a little bit circled and and and, and was ready for it and and, and he, he he put a whipping on Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. Another big factor that's going to be uh play a huge role in Saturday's game is obviously Ole Miss quarterback Matt Corral who is putting up great numbers. I mean numbers none of us no I don't think anybody would have thought uh, he'd be putting up if, if Matt Luke was still the coach because I, I remember no. a lot of debates that that people would have about is, is is Matt Corral the guy going forward? Is he the right guy? And obviously under Lane Kiffin, he is. Where right now with the numbers that he's putting up in the season that he's having, where would you put him in the pecking order of great Ole Miss quarterbacks? Would you put him around the, the Bo Wallace stage or, or do you think he, he could get up to possibly rival a Manning? I, I think he's right now kind of teetering in that Bo Wallace, Chad Kelly uh, neighborhood. But with the balance of the rest of this season, he sure could vault himself up there in the in the pantheon in, into the Manning class. And Saturday, last Saturday, he threw for a, t- a touchdown in the 16th straight game. That second only to Chad Kelly. It's ahead of both Archie and Eli. And on the uh, career passing yards this Saturday, with just a modest game, he moves up to about third or fourth moves ahead of Romero Miller, a good quarterback, and ahead of Kent Austin, who was a good quarterback. But the rest of this year, I think you'll move up. And, and the big number for Matt Corral so far this year, and it's juxtaposed with the game last year at Fayetteville, he, it, is, it is zero. He's got ten touchdowns, zero interceptions. He had six interceptions last year at Fayetteville. If he had just had five, Ole Miss may have won the game. Had the ball with uh, down six, two minutes to go in a timeout, and he threw another touchdown that went for an interception return. And Ole Miss got down to the goal line not once but twice last year and unable to get anything out of it in Fayetteville. I think this game naturally, this series, this rivalry, and I got my name if y'all wanted in a second, I think this rivalry really should settle into a mostly home field advantage game. Well, last year it was home field advantage. Reynolds Razorback Stadium, and it, and Saturday in, at Vault Hemingway, Ole Miss favored. I think Ole Miss should win the game by virtue of being at home. This, this, this should not be one-sided either way for, for a, a, a visiting team. You know, when I, when I look at Matt Corral's career statistics, most of the interceptions and turnovers in his career, and he's thrown 18 interceptions, most of those have come in two games. Six against yeah. Arkansas, five against LSU last year. So, I mean, they come in bunches when they come. They just It just doesn't happen very often. And, and I don't know of any other quarterback right now where the game is in his hands in the SEC more than with, with Matt Corral because of how much he runs, because of how much he throws. Like, the, I know this is a team that's got great running backs, great receivers, but it all goes through Matt Corral, and it feels like that's more so than any other team in the SEC. Phil, that's a great take. I mean, he really is the conductor. And right now, because of injury and lack of experience, I don't really know where they would turn. If, if Matt had to come out to catch his breath for a series, it may be back to John Rice Plumley and kind of a, a, a freak offense that almost nobody can game plan for. But it, it is really on Matt Corral, and he was so pressured last week. He didn't resemble himself. Now, the degree of difficulty was much higher, but there was not a time against Louisville, Austin, Peter, Tulane, where he was kind of running for his life, just frenzied and, 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 and hurried and last Saturday, except for that first drive that, that stalled out at the five-yard line. The rest of the day, it, it didn't, did not look at all like the team I saw in the month of September. Mm-hmm. Um, people make a big deal out of 11 o'clock games on the road and tried to do that last week as if that was going to have anything to do with how Georgia came out and played and obviously that had zero to do with it. You know, and they focus sometimes on the fans and the atmosphere and, and everything. So we know it's well known Mississippi never loses the party. Does an 11 o'clock kickoff, um, you know, take away any of that Grove atmosphere 
And does the Grove atmosphere make its way into the stadium? Because when I read all about the atmosphere at Mississippi football, I read about outside the stadium. I don't hear a lot about inside the stadium. And this is the first time I'm at a Mississippi home football game. Oh, Phil, can't wait for you, wait to see you and for you to experience it. But 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 those that read is is correct, and you often hear people say maybe like on game day or even in 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 conversation. Boy, it's going to be a great scene Saturday for Ole Miss playing at the Grove. We don't play at the Grove. <laughs> we party at the Grove. We do. There, there's not stripes and end zones and hash marks in the Grove, and a lot of times we don't carry that enthusiasm. From the pregame, arguably one of the great pregames and tailgate scenes in all, all all of the all of the sport, but a lot of times it loses some of that luster in that 250 yard walk to to Bald Hemingway Stadium, and you sh- and it sure does it for 11 o'clock. I love early games because Drew knows I get up <laughs> at the crack of dawn and I'm yes, ready to do. go every morning. But 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 most people, and for the visiting fans, it's really really rough on them. Even Eastern Arkansas and Memphis fans, it, it, it's hard on them. And for the home fans, uh, they get a they get a little tired of it. And we probably know this isn't our only one we're going to have all year. You get that rat a tat tat of eleven o'clock. You really get desensitized to that college football feel, and it gets old fast. Well, this will be second in a line of three in a row of eleven o'clock kickoffs for the Arkansas Razorbacks, Brad. So everybody on the, on this side of the state is, is start, slowly but That's surely wrong. starting to get used to it. But <clears throat> one of the big stories, you know, off of the field uh, that came, well, I guess technically it happened on the field, but it has nothing to do with the game of football, uh, of Lane Kiffin's comments and, you know, throwing the headset and get, get your popcorn ready. Yeah. They've now turned it around trying to make light of it. Uh, you know, they'll be giving out – free popcorn to the first 5,000 fans at Vaught Hemingway on Saturday. But is it still the feel of all aboard the lane train? You get them, you get them, Coach Kiffin, say whatever's on your mind, or is it starting to get to the point where let, let's pump the brakes, let's not make ourselves the the butting end of a joke? Yeah, well, he, you know, he, he, he tried to circle back on those comments. I thought handled it well, especially with Jamie Erdahl, a fine reporter, and and, and, and she didn't need that, and she took it great. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she said it was good TV. She really handled it well. And he, he walked back. He apologized, and, and I think he made it. And, yeah, and, you know, around sports, you always try to turn maybe something that's a negative into a positive. The biggest way to kind of move on from get the popcorn ready is win a ball game. If you don't, it stays with you with, with, with every meme, with every joke. And I got bad news even for the free popcorn uh, people at the game. And I told you this years ago, Drew, when I had to come down for a meeting, I had to go up to the press box. Mm-hmm. I think it was like on a Wednesday. Or I think it was a Thursday, and that's when I told you I realized. You know, they pop our popcorn on Thursday. Oh. Yeah, that's not, that's the freshest stuff there, is it? Yeah, and so that, that's gonna make it. That's gonna make it a little rough. But Saturday for Sam Pittman and Lane Kiffin, the winner of that game, I uh, it can be really proud. I really think coaching matters. I, I, you, Drew, you know, I've said that for a long time. Mm. I think coaching and instruction matters. Young people are begging, begging for d- discipline and structure and order. And one of these teams will we, you know, we'll head into the, the rest of the body of October with just one loss, and you could argue maybe the inside track for the Sugar Bowl. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's uh, out of reach for for either team to or fan base to kind of have that feel of you know things go well. I think this is a a critical game for both. I mean, if if you win on Saturday. Both teams can be looking at realistically finishing the year ten and two, nine and three, and and nobody sure really bad bad an eye about it. Yeah, sure can. I mean, now you look at the the, the balance of both teams' schedules for the Razorbacks, UAPB, and for Ole Miss Bandy. That's probably the if, for if you lose in the in the in the backdrop of losing, that's probably the only gimmies the rest of the year. Now that they're going to win more than that, but everything else is kind of a coin toss for the defeated team the rest of the year, except for when the Razorbacks mm-hmm. face UAPB in Little Rock and when Ole Miss plays Dandy in Oxford. All right, Brett, uh, real quick, I uh, only got a few seconds here left in the segment. What I've given you since Monday, what is your rivalry name for Arkansas Ole Miss? Well, you know I'm going to go way back, way back in the Razorback Ole Miss archives. And I'm going to go to Bambi. Lance Allworth, the great player from Brookhaven, Mississippi, broke Ole Miss's heart back in the day with going to Arkansas. 
He was a married student. Coach Vault uh, wouldn't allow married students. And, of course, that, that woman that he was married to later became first lady of the state of Arkansas after she divorced Lance Allworth and met and married Governor Jim Guy Tucker. She was first lady of Arkansas. So I'm going to call this series The Battle for Lance Allworth's Soul. <laughs> Love it. Is that Love shit it. on a T-shirt? I think we can fit that I on a T-shirt. I think we can fit that. Okay. And, and, and Lance Allworth was my dad's favorite Razorback player ever. See, Brett, we, I knew we could count on you for a good one that dates back to the rivalry's mm-hmm. history. It's well <laughs> done, and we always appreciate you coming on the show with us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, Drew. Appreciate it, Brett. All right, Brett Norsworthy. He'll be there in Oxford for the pregame for the Mississippi Football Radio Network. And uh, we'll definitely have him on later on once we get into basketball season for certain. Halftime is brought to you by Pradco Outdoor Fishing. Get out for your pond and creek fishing. Nothing catches bass and bluegill in a pond like a rebel crick hopper. You can twitch it, pop it, walk it, and swim it. This is the ultralight fishing lure that looks and acts like a real grasshopper. The crick hopper will work great in tandem with light spinning rods and reels with four or six pound fishing line. And you'll find the rebel crick hopper available at Walmart, Bass Pro Shops, Academy, LureNet.com, and Tackle Shops everywhere. All right, we've made it to the uh, end of another fabulous edition of Halftime. 877-377-6963. Close it up with a quick segment next. We're back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back for another football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to your website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit don't forget to use our promo code believe to receive your bonus that's b-l-e-a-v from football basketball boxing right to your favorite vegas casino games don't wait to take advantage of these amazing offers for the 2021 season bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports bet online where the game starts 